Well, Reverend Mitri Rahib is the founder and president of Dar al Kalama University in Bethlehem. He's also a former senior pastor of the Christmas Lutheran Church in Bethlehem, joins us from Bethlehem in the occupied West Bank. Good to have you with us, sir. First of all, I know you've been in touch with authorities from the Greek Orthodox Church. What are you hearing about how many lives were lost in the Israeli airstrike on this church? Um, so far, uh, 20 people uh, were killed uh, and uh, 14 people were injured uh, in this bombing. Uh, of this uh, uh, church compound. Palestinian casualties are often a statistic rather than a story of human beings. And I know that you knew some of these people who frequented this church personally. Tell us about them. Anymore. Uh, these are families with uh, children. Uh, most of them are uh, women. Uh, I, I know of one couple. Uh, they just had their first baby girl uh, just a few months ago. Uh, they were killed uh, in this uh, bombing. Uh, there are older people uh, that are uh, connected to our church, uh, uh, an older woman uh, that was killed. Um, and people went there because they thought this is the safest place they could go to. There is no other safe place, they thought, in Gaza. But uh, now they discover there is no safe place in Gaza at all. Let me, Pastor, put you the Israeli line from the Israeli military. They say they were targeting a command and control center. The Israeli narrative is often that these are people who are being used as human shields. What do you have to say to that? No, I mean, in the compound where, uh, where all Christians, uh, all families with their kids, uh, these are uh, uh, lies uh, that we are used to. Um, and uh, remember, this is one of the oldest uh, Christian communities in the whole world. Um, we have only 1,000 Christians, less than 1,000 Christians left in Gaza. And uh, to, to, to have now three families, uh, missing out of them. Uh, this is something that... ...survived this war. And uh, Gaza used to be the main Christian hub in southern of Palestine. Already 325, uh, uh, there was a bishop in the first Christian council at Nisia representing Gaza. So that is that community is so old, and now we fear this will be the last generation, the last age for this church. And this is very, very sad. Imagine if a bombing like this will happen to a synagogue in the world. The whole world will be in uproar. Imagine if something like this will happen in Ukraine. People will talk about Russia and its aggression. But when this happens to the oldest Christian community in Palestine, we feel that the West is really just Pastor, silent. Let, let me jump and in and put to the, the Israeli narrative. They, they would say terrible attacks like this have happened. We've seen, of course, terrible attacks on civilians on October the 7th, Israeli civilians. And they say there's no other way for them but to act, as they call it, in self-defense, that this is self-defense. What do you make of that? No, this is not self-defense. This is actually a war crime. This is... Uh, they want basically to, to, to kill as many Palestinians as possible. And uh, remember, most of these are civilians, children and women, and they want to drive them away uh, out into, into the desert, in, in, uh, to, to Egypt or something. It's the second Nakba. Uh, uh, remember that some of their leaders said, we wish that uh, one day we will woke up and uh, Gaza will be swallowed by the sea. Uh, there will be no peace without justice for Palestinians. This should be clear for the whole world. OK. T Palestinian Christians, like Muslims, they have been under decades of Israeli occupation. Tell us how that has, is impacting the survival of Christian communities. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, uh, Christian immigration has been a big problem. Uh, because, uh, you know, Christians say, you know, my grandfather went through this, my father went through this, 
I'm going through this. Do I want my kids to go into this? I mean, you know, for 75 years, we are uh, hoping for the day that will come where we will have our self-determination, our independence, our own states, uh, to live in dignity uh, beside Israel. But so far, uh, Israel wants to have the whole cake, the whole land, and to get the whole geography and to get rid of the Palestinian demography. And this is exactly what they are doing now in Gaza. All right. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Welcome.